Emacs may be confusing at times, especially to newcomers, because it adds some additional terminology and it uses certain words in different way than elsewhere. Certain concepts available in Emacs may mean something different that they usually do in some other places or in some other applications. In this episode, I will try to clarify that. But before we start, let's first do something funny and let's try to define Emacs. What is Emacs? You may think of Emacs as of a text editor, which is certainly true. But I would like to propose another definition. Let's define Emacs as a programmable text-oriented user interface. Emacs is a user interface, a text-oriented interface which can be customized through programming because it not necessarily allows you to deal with files, but you can do other things, other actions which are not file related. To understand that, let's start with a first definition. In Emacs, there is this concept of a buffer and buffer is a a named virtual place which can hold content, which can hold data. The important thing is that a buffer may be related to a file, but it doesn't have to be. So let's go ahead and let's open a project, one of the previous ones, and let's open a file, for example, core index. This is the buffer of this file. Everything which is displayed except two bottom lines is the buffer. So buffer, this buffer displays the content of the core index file. But in Emacs, buffers don't have to display just files. As we've seen in the previous episodes, I can, for example, open a terminal and I can interact with my file system. And this screen is also a buffer in Emacs. I can close it and I can go back to the previous buffer, which displays a file. Or I can just uh, open a directory. And in this case, I'm seeing my files with the dear add mode. And this is not a file, but it's a buffer. Emacs allows us to interact with external things through buffers, which are named things. And as they are named things, I should be able to find them by names. So the most useful command is to switch buffers. So to do that, I'm pressing space B followed by B. And now I see buffers. So I can switch back to a previous buffer. Let's open another buffer on the left, which displays the tree structure of my project. And let's open another file. And let's open yet another file. Let's close that. So now I have three files, but I only see the currently displayed file. To switch to other, I press space BB. And now I can switch between those buffers. I also see the dear add buffer, which displays the content of the core directory. So here I can just start typing and it will match my uh, query. I can quickly select a buffer I'm interested in. And it can be either a buffer which is connected with a file or a buffer which is not connected with a file as the dir add buffer. So if I press space BB, it says that I can switch to a workspace buffer, which means that it limits it only shows me the buffers that are related to this particular project. But there are other buffers. So if I press space B uppercase B, I can now see other buffers that are available in this Emacs session. And if you create more workspaces, and we will discuss workspaces in the future episodes, by, by pressing space B uppercase B, you will see all the buffers across all the workspaces and and more. And if you just press space BB, you are limiting that to the workspace buffer. 
So you are working in a context of a particular project, which is usually what you want to do. Pressing space PB is kind of long because this command is usually used pretty often. So in Doom, there is a shortcut. So instead of pressing space PB, you can just press space period for the same effect. Space period and quickly switch to a buffer. Like so. If I want to quickly switch between all buffers available in that session, there is also a shortcut for that, which is space shift period. So space period for the workspace buffers, space shift period for the all buffers. So here in the all buffers, when you want to switch between all buffers, you can press space. And this will show additional hidden buffers. Well, let's select this buffer here. As you can see, this is the buffer that was used to display the left side uh, project structure directory. So if you have a buffer that you no longer want to display, you can just kill it by pressing space B K, like so, and it will disappear from the uh, list of uh, buffers. At some point, you may want to quickly create a new buffer. So you just press space B, uppercase M, and you can start typing. And this buffer is named new. So this new buffer has stars at the beginning at the end of the name because it's a special buffer. So now if I go back to this buffer, I can save it by pressing space B S and I can give it a name, let's say test JS. So now if I select another buffer, I can see that this buffer is no longer a new buffer. It's a test JS, so it's connected with a file in the file system. Now let's say that I would like to display two files at the same time using a split view. I can quickly do that in Emacs by pressing Ctrl W V. So I have now two windows. I can switch between them using Ctrl W W like so. Right now I'm in the right window so I can just press space period and I can select another buffer. I can split the window again vertically and let's say I want to display another file here. I can also split window horizontally by pressing Ctrl W S. And let's say here I want to have a new buffer. So if I press Ctrl W W, it will go through all the buffers in a certain order. But if you use the VI movement keys, which is H, J, K, L, you can control how you move between those windows. So if I press Ctrl W, J, I will go down. And if I press Ctrl W, K, I will go up, down and up, down and up. Now if I press Ctrl W, H, I will go left and again left. And then L, Ctrl W, L to go right and right. So this way you can quickly move between the windows. So now it's a good time to define a window because in Emacs, window is a section of your screen. So window doesn't mean the same thing as in the context of an operating system. So it's not Emacs window, it's just a window of your content. And here I have four windows. So you can think about windows as panes or just uh, regions of your screen. So now I have four windows and let's close some of them. I can close them by using Ctrl W Q. Now those two windows are have different width. So I could correct that by using greater than and less than symbols. So I press Ctrl W to go left and the less symbol less than to go right which is quite cumbersome. So I can just press Ctrl W 
equal sign to make those windows of the equal width. And the same goes for horizontal windows. So here, between those two windows, I'm in the lower window, and if I press Ctrl W plus, I can increase that window. And if I press minus, I can decrease the, the height, in this case, of this window. So these are windows. And because Emacs uses this term for the sections of your screen, the whole instance of your application is called a frame. So usually you will have just the one frame and inside that you will create your windows. This is something just to remember. This episode was more abstract than the previous one, but I hope it clarified slightly all those concepts and now you have a better understanding of it. Think of Emacs as of a programmable text-oriented user interface. So Emacs allows you to be more efficient when interfacing with the machine. And you can open and close files and modify them, but you can also do other things because it's all about text, it's all about content. That's all for today. May the Emacs force be with you.